Your boy Mill Prep Shawty back again. You know what I'm talking about? It's that guy that calls himself that freaking, freaking vegan. It's the guy who also wears those short shorts, but why is he wearing so short? Because tricking ain't tricking unless you got it. You hear me? I said, well, again, I said, tricking ain't tricking unless you got it. It's your boy, Zay Zilla, the plant eating gorilla, coming at you on another Schmoobach Radio Sunday, aka my favorite day of the week, with another different recipe showing you guys how versatile you can get down in this kitchen, show you how much I love and how fun cooking can be. And this time, I'll be doing something a little bit different, and I'll give you a hint. Huh? All right, guys, guy, got it, got it? I'll give you another hint. Here goes another hint. Ready? France. It comes from France. You give up? I'm going to tell you what will you be cooking today in my kitchen. Oh, we oui, mes amis. Today we're going to get down with the most famous uh, ratatouille. And show you how guys how easy it can be. Oh, 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 oh. I do the clear. So go ahead and hold tight, strap on your seatbelt, because we're about to go on a ride that you ain't never been on before. Show you guys how easy it is and not how fancy it is all messed up to be now. You know what I'm talking about? So let's get down with the get down. Yeah? So of course, everyone has seen the infamous movie Ratatouille from Disney. And then of course, since it's all in the kitchen making it seem like it's fancy, it's not really a fancy dish as it's supposed to be now. It actually used to be a poor man farmer's dip meal that they used to do in the summer. They used the fresh summer vegetables. So it usually pertains to a zucchini that's going to be yellow and green. Also with some eggplants, tomatoes, and peppers. And it was supposed to be a stew, actually. The way they do it and they make the fancy schmancy. That's not technically it now. Of course, us Americans like to go ahead and hyperbolize everything and embellish everything. That's why we get the little stupid of American connotation. But it's okay, that's what you got me in here. I'm teaching you guys how it really gets down. But just for the sake of being fancy schmancy, I'm gonna go ahead and do it the traditional way of American. That's right, baby. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut the ends of our zucchinis here. Make sure that we cut the ends. We're gonna go ahead and cut them to thin little slices so that they're all even out. So we go ahead and pour it around our dish. All right, so let's get to it. So I could take my time and go ahead and thinly slice everything out by eye, but I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I'm a little bit of a neat freak and my OCD is gonna be like, ah, 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 it's not even. Ah, 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 ah. So to save me all that anxiety, I'm gonna go ahead and use this mandolin right here. Easy enough because it's got a blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and just. Pretty much just grate all the zucchini, onions, and the tomatoes on here to ensure that they're all the same thinness that I want. So, um, great little tool to have. So, let's get down to it. Plant that's going to be next and uh, just letting you guys know it is a little bit bigger than what I need it to be that's what she said and uh, so all I'm going to do is just going to cut it about you know about a third of the way there just in order that so I can keep that same shape in there so just a little FYI give you guys a close-up look of how everything came out now I had to cut the tomatoes by hand because they were getting a little too watery in the mandolin but everything else came out pretty well now the eggplants didn't come out the correct size as desired but that's okay because i'm not trying to impress any food critic i'm just going for the overall taste but my zucchini yes sir my squash came out perfectly fine i love it and the excess that we have left over we're going to be using for the sauce to go ahead and drizzle this down so let's get down to it down to the sauce I went ahead and put my oven to broil, and I got my peppers here. I got my red and orange. I'm gonna set them right here. I got the broil on high. I'm gonna set them in there, and I want them to roast. I kinda wanna get them to get charred a little bit so it's easy to go ahead and pull that off. And then I got my stove boiling hot with some hot water here, and I'm gonna pour my tomatoes in here, but before I do so, I'm gonna go ahead and cut across from here, there, like a little X, for my tomatoes. And I'm gonna blanch them with basically that's gonna be like a flash heat cook real quick. I'm gonna go right here for about 30 to 45 seconds. 
to ensure that all of it's getting cooked inside. And I got some ice cold water. So after 45 seconds, put them in the water so it can stop cooking and it'd be easy for it to peel off. So it's been about like 15 minutes, so I have my peppers in here, broiling up. And you can see right there, this is exactly what we want, ladies and gentlemen. Nice and charred. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So I'm gonna put oil right on top. Go ahead and let the heat finish cooking it, become a little bit softer. I'm gonna peel all that black stuff off, and I'm gonna go put it in my food processor with some other herbs and ingredients, and then we're gonna go get on with our sauce. Bam, all of a sudden it's soggy like that, so it's easy to pull all that charredness off, easy enough, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get that to it. <laughs> Now I got the peppers all peeled up. I'm going ahead and toss it into my food processor. I got some onions. I got some fresh cut basil I'm gonna add in there as well. I got some boiling water that I'm gonna mix with some veggie stock to go ahead and give it like a pepper kind of soupish taste. Also, I'm gonna flavor it with some pink Himalayan salt, some pepper, some parsley, oregano, thyme, and I got some of this right here. This is the magic stuff. This, I'm gonna give you a close up, and this is gonna be herbs of province. It's a mixture of thyme, basil, and all the other traditional Italian seasonings, and I think that's gonna set it off. It has a little bit of lavender. I love that. I never used this before, so I'm really excited to see how this is going to offset this, uh, this broth, this sauce taste. So uh, let's get to it. All these, I'm gonna go ahead and use a tablespoon and then I'm gonna use a big old heaping uh, tablespoon of the Herbes de Provence uh, to set it off and give it that uh, French taste. Let's do it. <laughs> Blended in there, add a shaker, a little bit of ingredient. I have some burgundy in there to set off a real good, nice gardeny smell to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my baking dish and go ahead and bask the bottom of that right there. So we get about that much thickness in there. All right. Basically, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it over like this. I'm gonna start layering everything. Here we go, eggplant green squash, yellow squash, tomatoes, and then goes the onions and go all the way around town and put that on top of this sauce here. Then I'll go ahead and bake it inside the oven at 320 for 90 minutes. Yes, an hour and a half because you want to make sure this gets all nice and charred. I'm going to go ahead, sprinkle a little bit of salt on top as well as some black pepper. Then I'm going to drizzle a little bit of this olive oil right here, extra virgin. So we can go ahead and get the top of that roasted. But before I put that inside, I'm gonna take my aluminum foil. I'm gonna put it over the top here and set it in there. So let go. Magnifique, mon amis. La fin. We have right here a ratatouille. Ha ha ha! Check that out. That's right. It's a little bit soggy than I wanted, but it is okay for the first time, my friends. And I made a little um, homemade bruschetta right there, so uh, I had to put that new basil plant to use. But I gotta say, it smells really fresh, like it came straight out the garden itself, the garden of God right here. But of course, use a little bit of my uh, vegan palm. I'm gonna go ahead and top that off here. And you know what time it is. 
<laughs> it's time to try it out. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Wait. Clean the palate a little bit. Some, uh, say, Margarita Pinot Grigio. <sighs> okay, nice. So pretty. I don't want to put that down. Okay. I hope it's just like in the movie where that critic tastes it and he goes back to his childhood. Let's see here. The Shaush. If I didn't know any better, I'll say I was in France. Mm. That is good stuff. Now, woo! Hold on, wait, one more. I stuck a fork in it. Forget about it. I have some good stuff right there. Real gardening. I'm glad I bought everything fresh because it's basically kind of like exactly what it's supposed to be a stew, a vegetable stew. It contains all the good gardening stuff. I'm glad I went ahead and bought me this fresh basil plant. That herbs of province really came out and brought some floral essence to this. It was really good. I mean, that's my first time having it, my first time making it. So I can only imagine what the real deal Holy Fields do with this. But Sacre bleu. Tana magnifique. Monsieur. Oh, That's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is really good. The sauce came a little bit more watery than I had planned. But you know what? We, we worked with it. It was good nonetheless. And this wraps up my video for today. So I hope you guys liked it. If you go ahead and you did, <coughs> excuse me, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the comment. Share with a friend. Let me know what you think. It's your boy, Zay Zilla, the plant eating gorilla, telling y'all to keep it vegan. And I'll catch you guys next Sunday. Peace.